Hey, 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 Jean. Welcome to the GTA 5 video. Today is going to be a live commentary where I'm going to sort of talk, talk to you guys about racing and what I do to race and how you guys can improve your racing, I suppose. I mean, obviously, all, all of this for my preference. But uh, first of all, what you want to make sure is you want to set your camera angle to high and you also want to utilize the right analog stick when racing. A lot of people that I noticed also with the camera angle is that they sort of stick it right behind their car. I think there's a, a second one after the the front view, right? Of the nose view. And then you get the, the one that's right behind your car. And then the second view. And then I believe the third. Wait, how does it work? It's a one, two, three. The fourth one. I, I'm on the fourth view. The, the one that's furthest one now, okay? So I'm on that view. And the reason why I'm on that is because I want to make things easier for myself, technically speaking, when it's like comes to decision making consistency and composure all of that is linked with this because you i'm improving my peripheral vis vision so that i'm not only focusing on the center of my car i'm focusing on everything around and if i have better view of everything then that means i'm gonna make my decisions quicker and i can see things better as well with opening up angles with my right analog stick so whenever i approach corners i'm gonna go the same sort of direction as that corner with the right analog stick with my thumb and my right thumb but what that means is the angle is also changing towards that corner, meaning that the angling is opening up so I can see further around that corner, therefore making things easier. See, first mistake a lot of people make, by the way, so you see a lot of people don't use the analog stick. So, for example, when taking this corner like this, they don't really see what's going to happen, what's coming up. So, you want to put your analog stick up, therefore you get this better view of things, sort of like a bird's eye view, I suppose, not exactly that but you wanna really wanna see the top of your car the entire time you race. So you wanna hold your right analog stick down the entire time, just a little bit down, not too much. If you do it too, too much, obviously you can't see shit ahead of you, but you wanna make sure that you can see things ahead of you. Therefore, when you approach corners like this, it's very, very easy to take. And you can take it so that you're pretty much sticking near as close to the apex. I'm racing with a couple of guys that are pretty decent who are pretty competitive with me, but you see here, I'm getting, I'm getting so much more speed just because of how well I'm taking these corners with the Apex and how I'm utilizing my right analog stick. So that's El Meister right behind me. This is a pretty short, simple track. Try to type it for yourself. Link in the description below. And uh, you see here, let go of acceleration. Control the bumps. The thing about the bumps is that if you accelerate as you turn on the bumps, then you will oversteer and you will spin out. And if you're at the front of the race, oh shit, that's a horrible, horrible mistake. Where is everyone? Oh shit. If you're at the front of the race, then you can take it calm and slow. That's one thing you also got to pay attention to. Because a lot, of, a lot of the times, a lot of people at the front, they take it too slow. Obviously, you want to keep attacking. But if someone's close to you, you want to just defend. And obviously, in non-contact environments, it's pretty difficult to defend. But just play it safe, you know. A lot of the time, for this entire time, my right analog stick is in that same position. But as I take a corner, you want to you turn it with right analog stick like this. So you're opening up the angles, just like this, opposite way. And you sort of... Just go with the flow of the car and you're going to pretty much dominate every single corner. thing about this is the reason why it benefits me a lot because I can pretty much push every single corner without having to hesitate if I'm going too fast or too slow. And therefore, I'm making everything more efficient and more comfortable and more consistent. And this way, I'm more composed as well because my decisions, I'm making these decisions so early before I even approach these corners so I can pretty much take it as efficiently as possible. That's the thing. I understand I'm starting pole positioning and it's not fair blah 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 but the thing is regardless i mean 90 percent of my race wins came from not starting from hosting it's mainly with uh, someone else hosting because i don't like it when i host it doesn't make it fair on others it's one of those things to really challenge yourself as well but you see here as i'm going to turn left i'm going to turn my right analog stick to the left as well meaning that the camera angle will switch towards the right it will turn the opposite way and just like we had again going to the right and then left again you got to really pay attention to both. Some people may not get used to this, but here's the thing, man. If you're going to play on this camera angle right here, which a lot of people do, like this one, for example, like, how the hell are you supposed to race in this environment, brothers? You know, your, your peripheral vision is poor, and you're not going to get efficiency around corners. You're going to go around cor blind corners without knowing what the hell to expect with the angle that you're going at. So you obviously want to play at the furthest angle back, use your right analog stick facing down, the entire time so that the camera angle pops up from the hood of the car so you can see just about everything ahead of you and also you want to shift it left and right and so many times as you approach these corners so you open up the angle to see things more clearly 
although my fastest lap there was absolutely horrible but if i shut the fuck up and i just concentrate even further then i can possibly beat that but anyway let me know if this if this helped you out in any way whatsoever i know it's all analogs talking and whatnot i'm gonna be showing you some footage here as well when i blood that far i and i get me though don't give a shit about all these fucking hoes on Right, we're carrying on this live session. We're doing another track called Narfam. This is a track that consists of many, many corners, little twists and this and that. And the thing is, a lot of, lot of people, 95% of the people that play this game don't like tracks like this because there's a lot to pay attention to, a lot to concentrate on, a lot of things to actually mini-max and really optimize with your car. And this all comes down to the general settings that you're using with your car and the camera angles, right? I repeat this time and time again. It's very important that you play the furthest view out and it's very important that obviously you got to use the one that you most prefer to. I don't want to force you guys to change it, but I just, I'm just saying, I've suggested this to a few other people that don't, never used to play this on a sort of camera angle that I'm playing at. And they improved quite significantly with a couple of seconds more with their best lap times. Now, it's very important what, what you see here, already a corner coming up. Why am I playing on this camera angle? See, this is fucking atrocious. Wow, I'm not used to this. Also. So you see here, furthest point out, what you see, you want to approach these corners. And just pay attention to your car, none of the cars that are next to you. I know it's very difficult to get used to, but you see here, it's all about controlling the speed, all about approaching these corners, how you do it, and what lines you take. You see here, in so many corners, so you want to really pay attention to it. So fit through the gaps if you can to open up better angles for consecutive corners. And you notice that I'll take the lead here, but let's see if I can hold it. So approach an apex, you want to break it to approach this consecutive corner. Of course, going down this little bit here, you want to really slow your car down and position it so that when you turn, you don't understand too much to the point where you're gonna hit into stuff, but really just perfect it. And this is quite a bit of a long track, but you see so many corners coming up, but you really gotta just use your camera angle to your advantage, opening up angles so you can shoot out of corners better, because you know you're making things efficient for yourself. Sorry, shoot out of corners quicker than other people. And uh, you can see here, I pretty much know what to expect around these corners. A lot of these guys have done this track before, and you see this comfortable lead I've got at the moment, all due to the fact that I'm using my right analog stick to open up angles to sort of see how I'm approaching these corners, where exactly my car is pointing, so that I know exactly when to accelerate, when to brake, when to hit the apex, and when to just pretty much floor it, which is accelerate, but yeah. All right, as I'm doing this live commentary, slightly more of me not concentrating as I'm having to race, but you see here, as you approach a corner, break, opening up angles, approached apex very easily. How close I was at the apex there is ridiculous because of these camera angles. You can just really control the speed. Uh, realistically, you can just really perfectly just race without making any mistakes and the consistency will be there, guys. You know, this is like, you can do this all the time. Really, I would say first, if you're not used to this, if you get disorientated, just give it a go, practice. You know, it's all about practice and you will get amazing lap times and you will be pretty hard to keep up with and compete against you know that's what i'm saying it's understand it's unfair advantage for me because i know these tracks these are my own tracks i understand but the same sort of concept is applied for every other track because all i'm doing is using utilizing the right analog stick with my camera angle for facing up the entire time and obviously the point is you want to obviously and when you approach a corner, you want to make sure the camera angles is facing all the time. Slightly, think about this analog stick. See, if I let go of it right now, it's like this for the entire time, right? So I'm going to do this entire lap without my analog stick facing down. You see the huge difference, right? And how awkward it is. So when I approach this corner, I don't know what's going to happen on this corner here. So look how blind I am. So I'm losing so much speed. I can't see that if I don't use my right analog stick. It's so weird. Like, how the hell do people do this like it, it, it doesn't make it's not gonna be efficient it doesn't benefit you whatsoever and look the entire lap i'm gonna be racing without the right analog stick right look at this look how blind i am. I can't see shit i can't actually i can't see this apex that was a horrible corner i lost so much speed i can't see this apex horrible corner lose a lot of speed i can't see this apex can't see nothing so the thing is it's very very awkward for me to use without without me using this right analog stick you know it's not beneficial it's not going to help you see how much of a difference the right analog stick makes in the racing situation so here's the thing man 
definitely give it a go. Look at this. I, here's the thing. A lot of people that complain are the people that don't know how to utilize everything that is on their controller. Because when tracks like this are rather complex and does require a lot from you, you want to use everything to the maximum potential. Look at this. I don't know what is going on. This is very, very difficult. I'm losing like a lot of time here. Someone's already catching up to me and I'm giving them so much time to catch up to me. It's ridiculous. So the right analog stick is very important, guys, because for the entire lap time, I'm not even using it and it feels absolutely weird. I feel disorientated, not even disorientated. I just don't know what to expect around these corners, what angle I'm approaching it, how my nose is approaching the corner of the apex. I'm, I don't even know if I'm close to the apex or not. So you see this lap right here again. Approach this corner here. Like I can't see the goddamn entrance to the tunnel, people. Look at this. Ridiculous. It's uh, you definitely um, definitely got to utilize the right analog stick. And there you have it. So here's the thing, all right. That was a rather complex race. A lot of people don't like that track that I've played with and they find it very, very hard to concentrate on to get the best lap times. And it's understandable. At the same time, you've got to think, okay, how do you optimize the Zantorno on the track like this? And realistically speaking, it's not always about flooring it and getting high top speed. It's always about controlling and how you approach these corners at what speeds. I'm going to Quaper smash my lap time again. Anyway, Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll be making more videos like this if you guys want me to. I know it's very difficult to talk and play at the same time. But uh, let me know in the comments below if you, if you guys find these videos useful or not. I'll, I'll stop if you guys don't find it useful. But one thing I'm sure you guys need to understand is that if you want to improve your driving, improve your decision making, please use your right analog stick and please use the furthest camera angle and to utilize your right analog stick properly with your thumbstick. Literally, all you got to do is hold your right analog stick slightly down with your thumb the entire time. You're going to get a huge, significant difference when approaching corners and when to accelerate, when to shoot out quickly, and when to straight, how to straighten up as well. You get all this information just from one simple process. It's not simple, but obviously everyone's going to take time to get used to that. But give it a go, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this useful. I'll see you guys soon. Show you soon. Now, good night. Peace. Yeah! Hey guys, you here, right here, Gene. Welcome to another GTA 5 video. It is now 19 past 8 a.m. in the morning. It's Monday morning, and I haven't slept yet. I've been working on this video for the entire day.